four years ago, I decided to go gray, completely cold turkey from dark brunette dyed hair. It took me two and a half years and I honestly loved every minute of it. But are there things I wish I'd done differently now that I know what I know about going gray? Oh my God, yes. So keep watching to hear the five things I did during my cold turkey transition that I regret so that you don't have to make the same mistakes I did. Hi, I'm Katie Emery, the founder of katiegoesplatinum.com, a website completely devoted to gray hair. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I am so happy to have you here today. So before I begin, I just want to explain to some of you why I chose cold turkey as the method to go gray from dark brunette dye because let's face it, for some of you, that does not sound like a great option. For me, it was the perfect option. For one thing, my hair was severely damaged from years of dyeing, so I knew it would not stand up to the rigorous bleaching that is necessary to have a salon transition. I also did not want to cut my hair short, which would have been an easy and obvious thing to do. For some people that might be a great option, but for me, I knew I would be traumatized going from long brunette hair to short gray hair. I just couldn't do it. I needed that time to get used to the idea of being gray. Here are the five things I would do differently if I could do it all over again. Number one, fading my dye. For most of my transition period, I used Neutrogena Clarifying Shampoo to fade my dye. And did it fade my dye? Yes, but it was not a good look. If you are going gray cold turkey from dark brunette hair dye, it is very likely that you are going to get a demarcation line, aka a skunk stripe. That did not bother me. However, I got into my head that I should fade the dye so it won't be so obvious, which is actually ironic because I think it made it more obvious in the long run because when your brunette dye fades, it turns grassy and coppery or orangey. This happens to all fading dyed brunette hair, but using the clarifying shampoo definitely exacerbated it. When you try to strip dye out, you don't go back to your natural hair color. What you get is a remnant of the dye still left on your hair, so I had brassy orange tones on my ends. At first, the brassy tones didn't bother me. I just used Joico Color Balance Blue Shampoo to neutralize the brassy tones. I'll throw some pictures up here so you can see. It really did do a great job. However, that didn't last the whole transition. Like I said, it took me two and a half years to grow my gray roots out to shoulder length towards probably the last six months or even maybe a year of my grow out, my ends were Bozo the Clown orange and the blue shampoo did not help in the least once I got to that point. It was kind of irritating because on the Facebook groups and other social media, I kept getting unsolicited advice from other women just to cut off the orange ends. But like I said, I didn't want to, I wanted to keep my hair long and it didn't really bother me that much. Looking back, I wish I hadn't even tried to fade the dye. You know why? Because silver roots next to dark brunette dye actually looks pretty cool. Silver roots next to clown orange ends does not look as cool, but it never occurred to me to do anything about it except for cutting it, which I did not want to do. And that brings me to regret number two, not being creative with those fading orange ends. Now, having seen and interviewed many women who've gone gray the same way I did, I found out there are alternatives. And if you don't want those orange ends, I hope you try these alternatives because they are cool. For example, Joni Peck, my co-admin over at Silver Revolution, what she did is she continued to go to the salon while she was growing out her gray hair and all she had them do was use the same dark brunette dye they'd been using all over her head and just use it on the parts where there was no silver. So she had them not touch the silver at all, but just use the dye on the ends. Now, if you have a hair dye allergy, that might not sound like a good idea. However, if somebody else is doing the dye for you and they have it so it doesn't touch your skin at all, maybe it would work. You can also use fun colors, not just dark brunette dye to cover your fading ends. I know people like Julie here and Sonia, they used fun colors like hot pink or teal or magenta to cover their fading ends. The sky is the limit. Do what looks best to you. To get those fun colors, if you don't want to use semi-permanent dye to achieve them, you can use temporary dyes like Manic Panic, Arctic Fox, etc. I'll put some links for those in the show notes below. Just make sure that you don't touch your silver roots or you could delay your transition by weeks or even months. Just keep your roots safe, cover the fading ends, and you'll have a blast. Cold turkey regret number three. 
fretting too much about products. Within days of deciding to go gray, I became my usually obsessive self and scoured Facebook and Google for tips on which products to use now that I had gray hair coming in. As I mentioned in my video about 10 gray hair transition mistakes, this is absolutely not necessary. Just keep using what you're using. The only products that you might need at some point during your journey are blue shampoo, as I mentioned before, because it helps neutralize orange brassy tones in fading brunette hair. And maybe a purple shampoo occasionally, only if you are seeing yellowing on your newly gray hair. You only use either of those products once a week. Don't overdo it. You'll either end up tinting your hair or drying it out. Cold turkey gray hair transition regret number four, not taking really great transition photos. As a photographer, I knew it would be important to document my transition to gray hair and I thought it would be fun. So I actually did take photos throughout my transition. Way too many photos. If I had to cite an exact number, I'd try to say something around a bajillion. It was insane. I'm embarrassed to show you my camera roll. And I even had enough foresight to take the photos in the same location almost every time. It was a brick wall outside of my company. I did it on my lunch hour. I'm sure the people across the street thought I was nuts, but at least once a week, I would make sure to stand in front of that wall, snap a quick selfie and record it for posterity. I really did want to see that change occur over time in the same location so I could compare. But let's face it, a red brick wall isn't a great background. And because I was trying to do it in a hurry, I often had a worried expression on my face because I didn't want my coworkers to come out and wonder what in the heck I was doing. So if I could do it again, here's what I would do. And here's what I suggest you do if you want to document your gray hair transition. Take a photo once a month or twice a month in a great location in your house, preferably one with a neutral background and one that is opposite a window. So you get that nice window light coming in. If you prefer to be a little more professional, I will put a link in the show notes below to the ring light that I use. You can mount your iPhone camera to it. And if you don't have a neutral background in your home or your home is very cluttered, you might want to invest in a stand with some paper rolls. Believe me, they're not expensive, but it is fun when you're all done to look at these photos, share them with other women for inspiration and see yourself change over time. Regret number five, not protecting my newly silver hair enough. I did not know much about my hair before I started my transition and I did not realize it was so fine and that fine silver hair is very prone to yellowing. There are many things you can do to prevent yellowing in your gray hair and to treat it. I'll link to my article about that in the show notes below. But here are the things that really matter and I wish I had done right from the beginning. Number one is I should have worn a hat every time I went outside. Now I wear a hat as well as a UV protectant. The other thing that I would have done right from the beginning would be to avoid using hot tools. Now I have a Dyson supersonic hair dryer and I can get to a fairly low temperature on it. But to be honest, I still don't even use that very much. I pretty much air dry these days. If you are dying to use hot tools, you can, you just have to be super careful and use a really good heat protectant like the Scene blowout cream that I use. There are other ones on the market as well. I'll link to those below. If you can avoid them all together, you might want to because sun damage and heat damage are permanent. Do I beat myself up for doing those things? Of course not. You don't know what you don't know. After years of suffering from damaged and unattractive dyed hair, I am very happy with the way my gray hair came out. I feel like it's gorgeous. I get lots of compliments on it and it is healthier than it's been since I was a child. So I have no regrets at all that way. The best part about having naturally silver hair is I no longer have to spend hours in the salon doing something I did not want to do. I did not want to sit there for hours. I didn't want to spend the money or the time and suffer from a burning, itchy, painful scalp for my hair to only look good for two or three days until the whole cycle started over again and I had to run around hiding my roots with root powder, using shine sprays, using anti-frizz sprays, only to get my hair dyed again in three or four weeks and start the whole process over again with it only looking good for two or three days. However, would I do things differently if I could go back in time knowing what I know now? Of course, who wouldn't? It's great and I hope that this helps you move forward with confidence and do things in a better way than I did so that you can have an enjoyable time going gray too. Now, how about you? If you've gone gray cold turkey or by any other method and you have some regrets or things that you would do differently, let me know in the comments below. I really wanna hear from you. And now I'm going to leave two videos for you to watch at the end of this video. One of them is the 10 gray hair transition mistakes video that I told you about earlier. And the other one is my interview with Diana all about the alternative method of going gray for women who do not want a demarcation line, 
They do not want to cut their hair, but they also do not want to bleach it. It's called the dye strip technique and it is awesome. So I'm going to leave that right here for you. Make sure to watch that next. And if you haven't done so already, please do give this video a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you can get notified when I have future videos. Thank you so much and have a great day.